uh, virtual private networks. They look for uh, uh, security related uh, configurations. They look for storage and all those stuff. If you if you are one among them looking for those kind of features, then for in serverless systems, better option. So the way it works out is it will create, it will deploy the same model, but it will be dedicated for you. Um, you, you can go into the serverless and then you can choose one among these templates. Okay, you can choose the template, then you can. Uh, so for OSS one, uh, GPT OSS model, you have two options: one TP and one Okay, you can choose whichever model you want to do, uh, and then choose the put the API key and then the number of workers. Workers is basically saying, hey, how much. Uh, uh, how many such parallel deployments you want to have so that uh, you can scale your deployment. Let's say that if you are having uh, uh, 10 requests, okay, maybe one, one worker will be sufficient. If you are uh, having 100 requests or 1000 requests, then you need to scale your workers accordingly. Right? It's a simple, it's a simple plan. So you can choose the number of workers, you can choose uh, the, that's pretty much it. You don't have to do anything else. It's, uh, whether you are using a playground, which is public, or you are using a dedicated service, it is very, very simple, simple to deploy these things. If I click deploy, it will take two, three minutes. But again, that's all about deploying your model privately for you. Okay. Um, now, this, the, this is another feature where if you are having your own model, okay, and if you want to do a fine tuning, okay, this is about much more advanced. Uh, uh, I just want to do the high level overview. If you want to tune your model for your particular domain, then you go into fine tuning. The user interface is also going to be very similar. Basically, you will enter the name, you will enter the number of workers, you will, uh, you will choose the container, and you will deploy it. Okay, so all these are to take hardly two three minutes for you to deploy. Um, with this, I want to go into the agentic workflow. Um, so now we we have integrated uh, 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 different uh, agentic workflows. I am saying is one more right? um, uh, So what we have done is it's, it's a very classic workflow. You can go into it. The user experience is also very, very similar. Either you can choose the option of going into a chat kind of a model, where you can just enter whatever the information you want. For example, I can I can copy this request and paste it over here. This is the, more like a chat experience, right? Uh, this is also a chat kind of. This is another UI we have built in. It is also more of a chat experience, but it will give you uh, uh, more. Uh, um, it will give you more animation, saying how does it work, right? So it, it it will tell you where where the call is happening right now. Am I working with the model or am I working with an chain agent, right? So it will it will give you more pictorial view and more details, right? But at the end of the day, both are the same workflows. Uh, your users can choose whichever workflow they want, but what happens is under the hood, it connects with the, the model that is deployed in Atlas Cloud, and then in, internally the model will talk to the Anchain user. Uh, and, the, and basically the result is coming from the uh, from the Anchain user. Okay, this is how seamless the integrations are for. Uh, uh, if you are using an Atlas Cloud, you, whether it is Anchain or any other agent, right? The integrations will be so smooth, so that your end users will not feel that feel any complexity. Right? I will I will be, uh, I will hand off to Victor to talk more about Anchain itself, right? But my goal here is uh, basically to showcase how seamless the integrations are, so that if you are using Atlas Cloud. Uh, it is very easy for you. you. In fact, if you are a model provider, you can upload your own model into our platform. Okay. Uh, but if you are having a real estate, or if you are having a banking, if you are having a financial model, you can upload those things into Atlas Cloud. 
Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So how many of you are actually working in like the real estate or financial service industry? Raise your hand, please. Okay, more than half. All right, that's great. So actually, if you are working in those um, those industry, they are highly regulated, as you may know, right? So one of the one of the um, one of the screening you need to do is actually called the sanction screening. So basically, is like they, the U.S. government, the OFAC under the Treasury, has uh, a list, uh, basically a database that they constantly update about the companies or the individuals that you are not supposed to make any transaction with. Otherwise, you will be in big trouble. So, um, so we have. Uh, so there's uh, one of the data engine we built out, so we real time in sync with all these like um, jurisdictions, like central database, including the OFAC and the Europe and uh, I mean the, the APJ to Japan and Israel, for example, right? So and so that that demo that Srini just mentioned, can maybe you could go back there. Um, so I will start from the, the high level, I think he, um, so that prompt he sent out, right? So you uh, maybe make it bigger. So basically, uh, the problem is asking a this is a problem that all the I uh, mean the AML or the financial the financial compliance officer in any bank or real estate company will have to will have to conduct on a daily basis, right? Let's say here, let's say I'm a fintech payment company, right? Same thing. If you are real estate, to change to real estate to give the AML a little bit context about what who you are. And then, is it safe to send certain amount of dollar, right? It's either in fiat or cryptocurrency or, or whatever, doesn't matter. And to a recipient, like an individual of the name. And then you can also put in some context around this recipient, right? So, first day or passport IDs or even like the IP address, this individual. It's, uh, if you are running your online banking business, right, you can actually get the IP address also. So again, that's a very simple uh, prompt that anybody without any AML training could type up. Okay? Back in the day, you actually have to like go through those like professional training and all that to, to be able to conduct this kind of AML sanction screen. But now, yeah, like if you hit enter, right? So it's like you will see um, how the last language model will actually is running on, we have, we have been partnering with Etherstock this year, right? So they, they offer like 200 last language model, right? So other than being locked into OpenAI and so on, it's great that they have 200 last language model for our customer to choose from. And also they, they, are, they, are, they are cheaper, they're much cheaper than you hit directly with OpenAI as so we were doing some certain quantity. And and then now the magic happened with the LOM, right? So the, the last learning model will try to interpret that problem that that's really just put in. And then under the hook, the last learning model doesn't know those individuals' name or IP address and all that. That's where the entry data database, the API, will make it available as an API call through the MCP server, so the model context protocol. I'm talking about all this the latest Silicon Valley technology. So the, the MCP servers came out like what? Like less than a year? Right. Six, six months back. Six months back, exactly. So we already fully integrated on that. Before we, we even like open source that piece of software here. So when you have a last language model, you can use the MCP server and down under the hook. The last language model will make a decision when to query the NChain AI, the API. Like for example, uh, you will ask, hey, this person, like Wei Zhang, is actually is on the on the sanction list, for example, at the OFAC. So if you are dealing with, if you try to make a transaction with this kind of individual, right? So then the last bridge model, after combining all the different feedbacks and all that, the facts, right? They will compile the warning for you that hey, be careful, right? So do not proceed with sending money to this individual, okay? And again, back then, you required a full-time uh, compliant, AML compliance officer to conduct this kind of screening. And now we're seeing that the last language model, the AI agent here, right, is acting like a, like a AML compliance officer for you. And at the end, 
You still cannot send this directly to FinCEN, for example. The FinCEN is the, the government agency to have all this like enforcement, right? So you, you're not supposed to send this directly to there, but it will significantly shorten the, the, the workflow, like last panel, my last panel talked about. So if back then, if you get a full-time employee to work on this, it probably would take you about half an hour of work. And now you're seeing that just, what, a couple no, seconds. Typically what happens is the model is not, typically if you go to chat GPT, the model will not be able to uh, do this kind of detailed analysis. The reason we are able to do it is because we have integrated and chain as an uh, agent. Okay, that is what uh, that is what this is all about. Uh, since we are able to, since we have integrated it, you are seeing a much much finer the quality of data. The, the model is giving you a more deterministic value, right? Result. That is what this is all about. Uh, this is just to showcase how easy it is to use a trust cloud platform and you can integrate with any agents uh, in the, that is available in the market. Yep, exactly. Yes. So, yeah, any questions? I have a question. <laughs> How many days did it take you to implement the agents on the Atlas Cloud platform? Uh, so in, implementing the agent is very, very simple. Building the agent is very complicated, right? But if, if you have an agent, Okay, it will hardly take one or two days. In fact, if most of it is automated. Okay, we can even use the model to generate integrate it with a trust cloud. So uh, all these integrations are very very easy. Uh, we have an agent. In fact, they are working with the, with a third party. Uh, basically, if you, if you tell that that is also an agent. Okay, if you tell that agent to integrate. They are uh, other third party agents into a trust code, it's automatically doing it as well. But if you're doing it manually, one or two weeks. And how much time did it save you, Victor? Oh, it's pretty fast because they, they are doing the most of the heavy lifting. So, we're the data provider, we're giving the API keys and the MCP script, right? It's all available, and it's amazing to see how fast uh, Swedish team can able to enable that. You typically you don't uh, see when you when you enter a chat, right? Typically you don't see what is happening behind, how it is talking to model and how the model is talking to the agent, right? If you run into this particular uh, UI, you will see those details, right? It is more, it will give you more data. Okay. That, that's all I have uh, for you. Thanks. Thank you.